Okay, my name is Oliver Poyle, and uh, the last people here that have knowledge or did some of the traditional healing stuff, the last one made me Wabagingan. Somebody's gonna go old with a big white mustache. I guess I'm getting there, so my mustache is starting to show and it's turning white. But the purpose of me talking and being videoed, and the purpose I wanna do this is I think it's important for me to share or make some shunya out of it. Like universities and educational stuff are training because of the reconciliation orders that were made from the, that stamp from the boarding school where we lost our language and lost our culture. For me, I never went to school. I never went to boarding school and I would look after my grandparents. I was protected from, from that process, but I, st I was still affected because most of my cousins and relatives, my brothers, went through that process. And here's what I'm thinking. A lot of our organizations are using spiritual stuff. And uh, sometimes I think they don't even know they do it, but they don't even know the purpose. So I want to explain the four medicines. In this first uh, chapter, the first medicine we got to think about is the sweet grass. Sweet grass is braided, it's braided. We go So it's braided into three. It's to remind you every day of your life you are being overruled. So we burnt the sweet grass to smudge ourselves, smoke. And the purpose for that is, is, uh, is, uh, what I mean by being overruled, we only got the mind is our control. The body will respond and live according to the spirit. And, and we call it jachak, the spirit, the hidden power within ourselves. So that's what it means, mind, body, and spirit. So if we don't live spiritually, we don't live with our spirit, our body gets weak. Because spirits, spirit, or jachak, that's his house, your body, that's where that spirit lives. So that's why a native person is real proud to be himself, takes care of his body, because the spirit dwells in that, that spirit is house, you know? We have a nice, clean church here. Do we ever bother that? Because we believe that Jesus lives in there. So in that same concept, that's the way we look at our bodies. So anyway, then we have to smudge because God gave us our mind. Our mind, dinendamui. Dinendamui. This is a tryout. I was going to talk all in Indian, 
But first, I want to talk in English so my consultant here could understand what I'm trying to do. Like I'm a, I didn't go to school that much. I wish I had a new university degree and in my back pocket I got to write a nice little legend and stories. But anyway, so now the mind, the reason why we take care of the mind, it's affected what's around us. Colors, they teach colors. Kanandiyawagin is the word color, Anandiyawak. So Kanandiyawagin Madzonin, it affects us because we have many brothers and sisters of all races that affects our life. Also now, natives are struggling. We used to live natural off the bush. Our superstore and our food source was the wildlife, the bush. Our medicine was the bush. We take care of our children in that process. Right up to the 1930s when there was a Great Depression, my father used to tell me, the depression of the 30s never affected their life. So, but today, economics is in the way. It breaks many relationships because families don't have money. Or people don't like to see what I know. I see we used to be fishing and trapping was our livelihood. So that was restricted. Then the welfare came in in 1965. So when the free money came in, it affected our life, families, men lose jurisdiction. Women were empowered. So we forgot about, I'm not saying the woman shouldn't be empowered, but what I'm saying is we lost our purpose to understand what is the man's rule? What is the woman's rule? So this is why we purify our mind with uh, sweet grass. We have a mind we could govern and make our own decisions. But you also got to understand the men. Because if you're a woman, you cannot have kids without men. So how are you going to have life? Same thing with the men. Without a woman, you cannot have kids. Kids is a responsibility. In our language, we say banoji. Banoji is interpreted meaning the cultivation of life. That's the only way you go forward in life, is raising the next generation. That's, to me, I call that doing God's duty serving the great spirit, whatever that might be. I don't know who the great spirit, but I, it's often used, so I have the tendency to use it myself. But anyway, so those two species, men and women, have to coexist. But there's a conflict. Why? Why is there a conflict? because we have given different powers. Man was given to be physically strong. And the woman was given to be strong mentally, stronger mind than the man. So then we ask ourselves, why? So we need to know why. Man was made stronger so he could provide for his children who gather food, medicine, wood, keep them warm. Then why was the woman given a stronger mind? Because 
a long time ago, there's no tying out trees or morphine or whatever to kill the pain. When a child was born, back in the olden days, you had to bring that child into this life, the natural process. So, so in order to offset the pain in that woman, she was given a stronger mind to endure that pain. So that's the reason why. So now what happens is if we abuse our mind, we hurt the man. He doesn't want to hit you, he doesn't want to because he's physically strong, but sometimes we do too much where Violence broke out, hurts the other, the other people. And, and the worst thing that happens is your children don't listen to you. Because they see that. Kids, since I could remember, I started remembering probably when I was three years old. Everything I saw, I still remember to this day. And that's what kids know. We might look at them as not, they're not paying attention, but they're picking up everything. So that's why we, that's why we do that. We got three areas of responsibilities. We got to be responsible for our mind to fit in with the spirit. There are spiritual rules, spiritual way we were developed. Then if we live accordingly, and then our body gets healthy. So that's the reason why today there's many things affecting us. So maybe if I share these things and somehow try to figure out to get them out to people so they could maybe change their life and live. Today we see doctor almost every day that, oh, you're stressed out. We don't know what stress means. So then we got two, two working things, four working things, medicines. They call it the four medicines. So we talk about the sweet grass. Now we talk about Skopsugan, sages, Skopsugan. To ward off the negative thoughts, you know. If I see a not nice looking woman on a, on a beach, it, right off the bat, something is triggered in my mind to think Our mind is, portion of our mind is made like that. We cannot stop that. We could only think about spiritually. That woman must have children or that woman is going to have children. I cannot laugh at it. I cannot have lust over it. But human behavior, we come from the animal behavior. This is why we're human. We're humans, abek, we call them in Chibwe language, abek, humans. They're physically above everything. So we need to know that. So what we do is smudge every day, it's a smudge. If we're having a, a, a circ, sacred circle session, you know, if everybody is honest in there, we think everybody else is a bullshitter in that circle. This is why we have to smudge. Our family lives, we always condemn each other. You know, once in a while, I pray for my daughter here, because I say things, I get a mad. But I want her to understand 
the education he got up to this point is irrelevant to life. What's irrelevant is her life. So he's got to understand the foundation of life, the rules, the do's and don'ts, to be healthy. So that's the reason why Forbes is a sage. We smudge everything. In our ceremonies, we smudge everything. We don't want negative thoughts to be in that sacred ceremony. We're trying to reach the good in a way of life. Then the next one, we look at the sema, tobacco. Sema means put it here, give it up, put it here, let it go. That's what sema means. A lot of people I see, oh, I wanted to ask you something. They reach out in their pocket and grab a cigarette. You know? To me, that's a cheap shot, but I don't say nothing. That's a cheap gesture, what you're asking. Weshkut, it was a sacred thing to ask a long time ago for somebody's help. Because sema means when you offer tobacco, you're putting in your life into that person. Here, yeah, you fix my life, whatever you want to do, you got to do. So you're not in control no more. So if you make a cheap gesture like that, that's meaningless. Might as well go through it in the flush it on the washroom sink. This is why I don't say too much. A lot of people ask me. Yeah, okay. So it's not up to me. I got to respect the source of my knowledge. I got to respect the source of my life. Give me the Lord, it was given to live. And I'm living, maybe it's not the way I want it. But I'm living. That's all you need to know. So many times I offer tobacco. Say ma. Because 99 times, 99% of what's bothering you is not yours. It's not yours. It's being influenced. That's why we gotta use tobacco. We gotta use cedar. We gotta use sage. We gotta use sweetgrass.